hi everyone it's kelly here welcome to my channel if this is your first time visiting welcome back if you've been before lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today i'm recording a video in a series that i've been doing this year linked to the reading challenge that i'm hosting um, which is all about reading non-fiction books um, and we're choosing those using the Dewey Decimal System, which is a, a library organisational system um, that is used in a lot of libraries here in Australia and around the world. So um, join us if you wish. Uh, we're a little ways into the uh, to this series. We're actually, this will be, uh, we're, we're at the halfway mark, basically. Um, so that's very exciting uh, in terms of uh, me talking about all of these uh, sections but there's no reason for you to necessarily read uh, read them watch them in uh, chronological order although that is the order in which I am um, recording them so uh, I will link up in the cards the uh, playlist for this challenge and this series of videos that I'm making um, and I will also link it down in the description below um, also in the description will be a uh, a list of all of the books that I'm talking about um, and also a link to the challenge. Uh, so if you want more information about any of those things, you can pop down into the description for this video. Right, let's get on into it. <laughs> um, so today with me, I do not have my trusty iPad today because I accidentally left it at work, which was very silly of me, but there we go. So I'm currently working off my laptop, which I've got over here. <laughs> um, so uh, but what I'm looking at on the laptop is the uh, Wikipedia page that talks about the list of the Dewey classes. So um, today we're talking about the 500s. This is science. Um, and the Dewey classes Wikipedia page will be linked in the description as well. So if you want to follow along at home, it will be nice and easy for you. OK, let's get straight into it. So our first section of the 500s class, the science class, is just titled science. So this is the 500 to 509 section. Um, so we've got uh, things to do with the natural scientists, sorry, sciences and mathematics. We've got uh, 501 is philosophy and theory. 502 is miscellany. Uh, we've got dictionaries, encyclopedias, concordances. We've got uh, serial publications would live in this section here. Organisations and management. We've got education research related topics, natural history. And then 509 is history, geographic treatment and biography. I have a couple of books to show you from this uh, se section of the 500s. And we start with 500 itself. Um, so this is our first one. There are places in the world where rules are less important than kindness by Carlo Rovelli. The call number for this one is 500. Um, so this book, uh, it says, what's important is not being right. It's to try to understand. Carlo Rovelli is one of the most inspiring thinkers of our age, whose reflections on science, history and humanity have transformed the way we see the world. Um, so this is, I think, a series of essays, essentially. And it says... These unexpected and engrossing pieces ranging from Einstein's mistakes to the conscience of an octopus, Nabokov's butterflies to the meaning of atheism, are the extraordinary logbook of an intelligence always on the move. So this just sounds like a good kind of philosophical reflection on science as a whole. Um, the next one that I've got to show you is from 508, which is to do with natural history, and it's called... Eaten by a Giant Clam by Joseph Cummins. Uh, great Adventures in Natural Science. Um, what a great title and what a fabulous uh, front cover. The cover art is just something else. Um, so this is where we've got stories that are true. The truth is stranger than fiction. And this is like stories of crazy, historically accurate things that have happened in the past um and it's all about 
tales of men and women risking life and limb in the name of science. So it sounds like a really fun kind of romp, if that's the kind of thing you're into. Um, so those two books were both from a library that I visit. Uh, these next two books um, are books that are from my own collection. Um, and this one is a Diary of a Young Naturalist uh, by Dara McAnulty. Um, the call number for this one is 508.092. Oh, I should say, I don't think I told you, Giant Clam is just 508. Um, so that one's, that one's there. Um, but this one, 508.092. Um, so Dara McAnulty is a young person uh, who is autistic and this is his scientific diary so again we're in the natural history section um, of this these broader classes sort of subsection um, and yeah he's just basically talking about um, it chronicles his world so his um, observations of um, the changing of the seasons um, at his home um so and the places that he goes um so yeah uh, i'm looking forward to reading this one at some point and this may well end up being the one that i choose um for this part of the challenge when i finally get around to this part of the challenge um oh sorry that was not the last one one more book from this section of 10 before we move on um and that is curious minds the discoveries of australian naturalists by peter mcinnes um, so this is obviously a larger format book. Um, it has a lot of illustrations whoop, as well as text. Um, the call number for this one is 508.94. Um, and I, it's the kind of book that has been sitting on my shelf for a long time that I sort of couldn't go by. Um, but yeah, very interested to read this one at some point. Let me just pop those down and then we'll continue with the video. All right, let's move on to the five tens. And this section is all about mathematics. So we've got a general section on mathematics. We've got um, then kind of goes into specific kind of sub genres of mathematics. We've got algebra, arithmetic, topology, analysis, geometry, numerical analysis and probabilities and applied mathematics. So all stuff to do with maths. I have two books to show you from this section. The first one with a call number of 510 is Professor Stewart's Casebook of Mathematical Mysteries by Ian Stewart. Um, this is the kind of book that I think would uh, delight my husband. I, and in fact, I need to remember to show it to him when he gets home today. Um, so this is all sorts of like mathematical kind of uh, cases and little stories, mysteries um, to do with mathematics. And the other one that I picked up from this section from the library is The Drunkard's Walk uh, by Leonard Mlodinow. That is presumably not how you pronounce that, but I am apologise, I don't know. <laughs> um, so this is all about probability. So this is how randomness rules our lives. Um, so yeah, this just looked like an interesting title um, to show you. Uh, and of course, it's all about probability. So should be an interesting one if you're into that sort of thing, which I know some people are. All right, moving on. We are now in the 520s and that is um, all about astronomy. Um, so we've got uh, Astronomy and Allied Sciences, Celestial Mechanics, Techniques, Procedures, Apparatus, Equipment and Materials. That's um, in 522. Uh, 523 is Specific Celestial Bodies and Phenomena. We've got a whole section on Earth, um, Astronomical Geography. We've got Mathematical Geography. We've got Celestial Navigation. Hmm. Ephemerides? Ephemerides? Ephemerides. Don't know what that means but it would be interesting for some people i'm sure and chronology so um that is the astronomy section i have only one book to show you from this section um, and that is this one which i am definitely keen to read at some point um, called the first astronomers how indigenous elders read the stars by Dwayne hammer hammer with elders and knowledge holders um so yeah, this uh, is a book that has had a lot of talk here in Australia. Um, and basically, this is kind of looking at the ways in which Aboriginal Australian people um, uh, observed 
the heavens observed uh, and, and factored that into their um, sort of knowledge about the passing of time and seasons and so on. So, uh, you know, I think it would be a brilliant book to read and I'm excited to do so at some point. Um, so this is one to look out for if um, you are looking for something to read for this section and astronomy is your thing. All right, moving on to the 530s. Um, this is a section all about physics. Um, so the, the nice thing about the science um, section is that it's just sort of divided up really neatly into um, different categories uh, that are mostly pretty unproblematic, unlike some of the sections that we've looked at before, um, because because science, basically. Um, so yeah, this is all about physics. Um, so we've got uh, physics, classical mechanics, fluid mechanics, pneumatics, sound and related vibrations, light and related radiation, heat, electricity and electronics, magnetism and modern physics. Um, so an interesting section for those of those among us that are um, into physics. I have one book to show you from this section, and that is The Secret Lives of Colour by Cassia St. Clair. Um, this one, I was drawn to uh, the spine, which looks like this. It's real dotty. Um, and I think this one is going to, uh, this basically is telling the story of some uh, 75 of the 75 most fascinating shades, dyes and hues from blonde to ginger, the brown that changed the way battles were fought to the white that protected against the plague, Picasso's blue period to the charcoal on the cave walls, um, acid yellow to Kelly green and from scarlet women to imper imperial purple. Uh, so it's sort of just talking about the way that colour has kind of impacted life throughout history. Um, so that should be a really interesting read. Okay, moving on to the 540s. This is chemistry. Um, so chemistry, I do not have any books to show you for this one, but obviously we go through different aspects of chemistry in this section. Um, we've got chemistry and allied sciences, physical chemistry, techniques, procedures, apparatus, equipment, materials for chemistry, analytical chemistry. We've got uh, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, crystallography, and mineralogy. Mid mineralogy, mineral mineral mineralogy. Yeah, that's how you'd say that. Yeah, back yourself. Okay, <laughs> uh, so no books to show you for this section. Um, so let's move straight on to five fifties because I do have some books to show you for five fifties. This is earth sciences and geology. Um, so we've got the earth sciences. We've got geology, hydrology, and meteorology, petrology, economic geology, and then we've got earth sciences of a bunch of different um, geographic regions of the world. So Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, and then other. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't say other. Australasia, Pacific Ocean Islands, Atlantic Ocean Islands, Arctic Islands, Antarctica, extra, extraterrestrial worlds. I kind of like how we're like lumped in with extraterrestrial worlds. That's kind of fun. <laughs> okay, so this is um, obviously the geology section. I've got two books to show you. Um, now, you might not, when you think of volcanoes, Australia is probably not the first thing that comes to mind. Um, there are certainly lots of countries that have very active volcanoes. Um, Australia certainly doesn't have many of those um, other than in our territories there are some I believe that are still active however I've got a book here on Australia's volcanoes because um, we do have a volcanic past and uh, this is the extensive guide to Australia's volcanic past by Russell Ferret and the call number is 551.21 um, so if you want to learn all about the volcanoes of Australia's past this could be the book for you. Um, and then the other one that I've got that sounded really interesting and the title just kind of appealed to me was, and also the gold foil, because we, we all love a bit of gold foil, is The Library of Ice, Readings from a Cold Climate by Nancy Campbell. And the call number for this one is 551.34. So that is part of geology, hydrology, meteorology. Um, so yeah. That this one just looked really, really beautiful. So this is, it says, tracks on the ice are considered a better way of telling hunting stories than any words. Even their disappearance is part of the story, an indication of time passing as the hunter and hunted move on. When the last of the ice has melted, the records of the past will be the least of our concerns. So a fascinating book, I'm sure. 
All right, let's move on to the 560s. This is Fossils and Prehistoric Life. And inexplicably, I have no books to show you from this section, and I don't know why, but I don't. Um, so this is all about fossils and prehistoric life. So we've got a section on pa paleontology, paleobotany, fossil microorganisms, fossil invertebrates, miscellaneous fossil marine and seashore invertebrates, fossil mollusca and molluscodia, quadia. Fossil anthropoda, fossil, well, I'm just, whew, there's some sciencey words all up in this section. Fossil chordata, chordata, maybe. Fossil cold-blooded vertebrates, fossil aves, in brackets, birds, and fossil mammalia. Um, so again, no books to show you here, but I'm sure you get the picture of what kind of books would belong in that section. All right, let's move on to 570 where I do have some books to show you. And this is the section on biology. Um, so we've got biology, physiology and related subjects, biochemistry, uh, specific physiological systems in animals, regional histology and physiology in animals. We've got specific parts uh, of and uh, physiological systems in plants, genetics and evolution, ecology, natural history of organisms and related subjects, and natural history of microorganisms, fungi and algae. So a couple of books to show you here. Three, in fact. Uh, two from my collection, one from the library. Um, so let's start with the library book. This is Sentient, What Animals Reveal About our senses by Jackie Higgins. This looks beautiful again, again with a little bit of gold foil there. We love a bit of gold foil on this channel. Um, so <coughs> let me just tell you about this book. Sentient assembles a menagerie of unusual creatures from land, air, sea, and all four corners of the globe to understand what it means to be human. The peacock mantis shrimp can throw a punch that can fracture aquarium walls. But more importantly, its color vision is exceptional. The ears of the great gray owl have such unparalleled range and sensitivity that they can hear many decibels lower than the human ear. The star-nosed mole barely fills a human hand, seldom ventures above ground and poses little threat, unless you're an earthworm, but its miraculous nose allows it to catch those worms at astonishing speed in as little as 120 milliseconds. That's wild. Um, so basically, this is what we're talking about. So how animals use their senses and what we have learned about those kinds of things, what it means for us as humans as well. So cool. From my collection, and this is one that I have read before and really enjoyed, is um, Soil by Matthew Evans, The Incredible Story of What Keeps the Earth and Us Healthy. I listened to this as an audio book maybe two years ago. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised um, by this book because I was like, it'll be interesting, but I don't know how like engaging it's going to be. It was engaging. It was really, really good. Um, so this is basically all about like soil, what we know about soil um, and like what it means for us, how we use it, what we've done wrong to it. Um, and sort of some potential solutions for how we can fix the problem um, of what we've done badly to the soil and how it's kind of wrecking everything. So um, this is like a really, really interesting book and also feels really important just in terms of your knowledge of like how farming works, how backyards work, how nature works. Um, so yeah, very, very interesting book. Um, and the call number for that one is 577.57. Um, the other book that I've got from my collection that I have not yet read um, is Pasteur's Gambit, Louis Pasteur, The Australasian Rabbit Plague and a $10 million prize by Stephen Dando Collins. I picked this one up just because it was like, what is it, what even is that? It sounds like one of those really interesting tales of history that you probably haven't heard of before. Um, so apparently Louis Pasteur was uh, trying to find the funds for to open a, the Pasteur Institute um, and there was a competition that was put on um, to try and find the answer to Australia's problem with rabbits, um, a local rab rabbit plague, which... I believe is still a problem. <laughs> um, so he was convinced that he had the biological remedy to the rabbit plague. So he sent his nephew to Australia to prove his remedy. 
and hopefully return home with the prize money. Um, but then there was a there's a story of sabotage in there. So very, very interesting um, sort of story that you've probably never heard of to do with a name that does sound familiar, but maybe the story is not so familiar. So, yeah, sounds like a good one. OK, let's move on to the 580s. We're getting to the pointy end of this section now. Uh, and here we're talking about plants. Um, so plants specific topics in natural history of plants, plants noted for specific vegetative characteristics and flowers, a bunch of sciencey words. <laughs> I'm going to have a go. Let's do it. We can do this. We can do hard things. Magnoliopsida, Liliopsida, Pinophyta, Cryptogamia, which means seedless plants, apparently. Terio, no, Pteridophyta, Bryophyta. I don't know what most of those words mean, but we had a good hot, a red hot go <laughs> at saying them. Yay for decoding. Okay, let me show you some books though, because I've got two to show you, one from my collection and one from the library. Um, this is the one from my collection. It's called Louisa Atkinson's Nature Notes. Gorgeous cover. It's This is, um, uh, it has a texture to it, which you probably can't tell from the, from the screen, but it's a really beautiful cover. Um, so basically, Louisa Atkinson was a 19th century naturalist, artist and journalist, um, and the author of the first novel published in Australia by a native born woman. An observant explorer of the environment near her home in the lower Blue Mountains of New South Wales, she sketched and painted the plants, birds, and animals of the area. Um, so th that's what this book is. So this is some um, just like extracts and artworks um, by Louise Atkinson. So a nice, easy read for um, this section. Maybe this one will be the one I pick. Its call number is uh, 580.994. Um, the other book that I picked up from the library to show you is this one called Urban Arboreal, a modern glossary of city trees by Michael Jordan and Kelly Louise Judd. Um, and yeah, so this is basically looking at um, different trees in different cities. So um, we've got, for example, the chamel ash, in Mexico City, we've got the Bodhi tree in Rangoon, the Banyan in Howrah, uh, we've got the Kentucky Yellowwood in Hanover. So like all sorts of different um, trees and it's got some lovely artworks as well um, to go with the little sort of page long description uh, of the tree. So yeah, very interesting book all about trees. Um, okay, moving on to the 590s and this is our last section for science um so this is the animal section and in my school library where i work this is probably our biggest section of science um is the animal section because you know kids and animals are match made in heaven they love them so um we've got 590 is animals specific topics in natural history of animals invertebrates miscellaneous marine and seashore invertebrates mollusca and molluscadea Mollusca, arth arthropoda, chordata, cold blooded vertebrates, aves, birds, and mammalia, mammals. Uh, so, zoology is basically our section here. And I have four books to show you, one of which is from my collection and three from the library. Um, so, this one is called A Guide to the Creatures in Your Neighborhood. Uh, and this is from the Field Naturalist Project. I cannot see an author name, so let me just see if there's one just on the inside. Okay, we've got several authors here. Uh, Zoe Sadokieski, Tom Van Doren, Dita Huchuli, John Martin, and Andrew Burrell. Um, so this is the Urban Field Naturalist Project, and I assume those are people who are part of that project. Um, so this is a book that's all about um, the kinds of uh, creatures that you might find in an urban environment. Um, so its call number is just 590, uh, and it looks like it's a great cover, I will say. Um, and this is 
Australia specific, this one. So um, it says in cities and suburbs all over, all over Australia, a staggering array of animals and plants make their homes among us. If we pay attention, each encounter with a bird, a flower or a bee is an invitation into a fascinating world of growth, decay, communication and sensation. And it's all going on right under our noses. Um, this one is from my collection uh, and it's called Animals of a bygone era, an illustrated compendium by Maya Saf Safstrom. Um, gorgeous cover again and beautiful artwork. Uh, so this is basically an illustrated sort of book, a nice short read um, with some kind of fun little asides by the animals saying, I'm not intelligent, but I am not that smart either. <laughs> uh yeah, this is kind of the thing, but it's brilliant. So these are um, extinct animals, I guess, um, and some really beautiful illustrations to boot. Okay, two more to show you. This one I picked up purely because of the cover, because it's absolutely beautiful, and it's called Seahorses, A Life-Size Guide to Every Species by Sarah Lowry. Um, look at that beautiful illustration. And the back also has some lovely illustrations in there. Uh, inside is photographs though, not illustrations, which is kind of sad, but probably helpful if you are actually trying to identify seahorses. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, the cover's just beautiful. Oh, look at this one. It's real bumpy. <laughs> okay, so that's seahorses. And my last book to show you also has a gorgeous cover, uh, and it is called... Nests, Eggs, Birds, an Illustrated Aviary by Kelsey Oseed or Oseid. Um, gorgeous cover again. Really beautiful. This one does have illustrations inside. Oh, look at these eggs. So cool. Um, so, some great looking stuff. Other egg layers that aren't birds included so yeah um this just is a beautiful book now i kind of want to read this right now <laughs> it's very pretty the illustrations are absolutely beautiful um so yeah i would recommend it just based on the illustrations alone but let me tell you about it it says combining gorgeous illustrations we know and fun scientific facts, nests, eggs, birds, dis explores dozens of notable avian species, robins, eagles, birds of paradise, flamingos, owls, penguins and more, and how they make their homes, lay their eggs and care for their young. But of course we know it's not just birds. So very exciting. Lots and lots of books from this section um, of the science section. And I'm excited to get to this, um, to this one. It, it's an area I don't do a lot of reading in. So I think um, that's definitely due for a remedy. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this part of the challenge. I'd love to hear what you have already read or are, to, are going to be reading for this section. So please um, feel free to share that down in the comments below. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.